FPL Game Week 30, my team selection. FPL is finally back and we have no more international breaks between now and the end of the season. I can hear you all cheering. Today, I'm going to take you through what my plans are for Game Week 30, my future potential transfers all the way up until I plan on wildcarding in about Game Week 35 after the big double that we've now had announced in Game Week 34. What is up everyone, FPL Harry here. Before we dive in, 1,000 likes is the aim. Subscribe if you are new around here. And the most painful part of having to sit down and do this video is having to talk about game week 29. I thought I had the ability after two weeks to completely forget about it until I realized that I had to talk about it in my game week 30 team selection. I scored 15 points on my free hit. Yes, that is correct. I scored 15 points. I got no returns and I got a red card to Regulon in my defense. I got a red arrow, but because the game week was so bad for everyone this week, I'd only moved from 15k down to 18k. So it's not massively the end of the world. And I actually had in my mind, if after game week 28 double and game week 29 double, I could have been inside the top 20k, I would have been happy with that ready for the run end of the season. It just happened to be that game week 28 gave me a really big green arrow that I wasn't necessarily expecting. And then game week 29 actually gave me a red arrow. But I'm okay with the progress that I've been making. If anyone has done worse than me in game week 29, I'd be fascinated to hear. Of course, those of you who didn't play your free hit, yeah, you probably did worse. But at least you didn't play your free hit and waste the chip that week. Now, before we go any further in this video, this video is very kindly being sponsored by HelloFresh. You've seen HelloFresh on the channel before. I really like it. I'm having a little bit more time on my hands, like to spend a little bit of my time cooking, but it is nice to have a little bit of a helping hand with a step by step guide on helping me know what to cook and how to cook it. Whether you want veggie meals, rapid meals, things that are good for calorie counting, your family favorites, they have it all covered. Use the code FPLH at checkout, scan the QR code, use the link in the description. This will give you a massive 60% off your first box and 20% off as well for the next two months using the T's and C's involved. There is a whole host of meals. I normally eat pesto pasta, spaghetti bolognese, or jacket potatoes every night if I didn't have this to help me. So if you're interested, you know, helping to speed up, cooking things a little bit different, check out those links and let's get into those transfers. Now, looking at game week 34, the run of fixes between now and game week 34 is really important for me, of course. So as a reminder, the plan in my chips is to wildcard 35, bench boost 37. The benefit to that to me is it allows me to target both game week 34 with the double with my free transfers over the next few weeks. Then I can target the second double, which is likely to fall in game week 37 predicted with the wild card that I'm going to play in game week 35. So looking into those teams as a reminder that have a double in game week 34, Arsenal and Bournemouth, I already have a double up on both of those. So given the Arsenal fits of this week, I'm probably not looking to invest. And I've got Solanke and I've got a Bournemouth defender, so I'm not massively looking there. Crystal Palace have some nice fixtures and some difficult ones in there. That's similar to Everton as well. Liverpool are the one that me and a lot of you are really looking to target. And then Wolves as well. Some nice fixtures over the next few weeks for Wolves. And then Sheffield United, the last team, we're probably not massively looking to target. Now, talking of Liverpool, the key man is Mo Salah and I have a choice. Am I going to buy him in game week 30 for some hits or am I going to buy him in 31 for hits, but probably less hits next week. But Mo Salah is a key priority for me and I have a choice of three midfielders that I would consider selling for him. Of course, Bakayo Saka is going absolutely nowhere. I fully expect him to be back available to play Manchester City this weekend. Cole Palmer as well with him being an enabler and how good he's been and the fixtures. He's going nowhere as well. So I could sell Son, but Son's definitely not going to go for me this week. If I sell Son next week, West Ham away, Forest, Newcastle, there are some nice fixtures in there for him. I do think he can continue to do well, but he is the one that would make it easiest for me to bring Mo Salah into my team next week. Now, I could go to Phil Foden and I can actually sell Phil Foden this week if I wanted to buy Mo Salah. Arsenal at home, I could, you know, not have him for that fixture and have Salah instead. Aston Villa, Crystal Palace and Luton. The key thing to mention here is because they play Champions League between game week 32 and 33, and then between 33 and the FA Cup semi-final in game week 34, I'm not certain he starts all of those next four Premier League games. So if that's going to be the case, given he's just played two 90 minutes for England over the international break as well, 
there's a little bit of a chance of rotation, which means he feels slightly less essential than maybe he did a few weeks ago. And then Gordon. Gordon up to Salah would be the most sensible thing to do for me. I wouldn't be able to do it this week. I can't do it this week without at least a minus eight. And I would have to sell Watkins at home to Wolves, which I don't want to do. But I could do it next week. The issue with selling Gordon is, of course, he's the cheapest, right? So if I was to sell Gordon next week compared to selling Foden or Son... I would have to go for cheap options. Like I wouldn't get Darwin. I'd probably have to go Mateta. We'll have a look at a few of the other combinations as well. So if I was to sell one this week and I wanted Salah this week, and we'll talk about potentially doing that, it would be Foden. And if I was to not do it this week, then Son and Gordon become much more likely to be sold for me. So a lot of my transfer plans this week revolve around Kieran Trippier. He's currently yellow flagged. Newcastle also posted 20 training photos the other day and he wasn't in any of them. Now, that's very common for injured players not to be in training photos, whether they're injured or not. Of course, if they're injured, they're not going to be in them. But clubs often leave them out just so it leaves the opposition guessing, particularly with someone like Trippier. It happens with Saka all the time when he's a doubt. So I'm not necessarily reading too much into that, but him being available or not is a massive part of what I do with my transfer this week. And the reason for that is Trippier is one of the massive areas that I have money built up in or invested in that I would need if I wanted to buy Mo Salah. If Trippier is going to be out, because I've only got Gabriel away at City and Alfie Doughty, who's flagged away at Spurs on my bench, I'd probably be forced to sell Kieran Trippier this week. And if I'm going to sell Kieran Trippier this week, I suddenly go from having 2.8 million in the bank to having almost 5 million in the bank, which then puts me really close to being able to afford Mo Salah. And then I start to think, well, if Trippier is out, then I'll probably sell Trippier. And then suddenly the minus four, minus eight to get Salah in this week doesn't feel so bad because I'm not selling Trippier available at home to West Ham. Now, in terms of those replacements, eight Norrie at Wolves, nice fixtures between now and the double, two home fixtures in the double, but one is against an Arsenal team where we wouldn't expect any attacking returns. Munoz at Crystal Palace did go off against Colombia with a knock. So we're bearing in mind that a press conference update would need to be positive if I'm going to go and buy him. But Crystal Palace, either him or a cheap option in Richards could be a nice option. Richards at 3.9, playing as part of their three centre-backs, looks pretty nailed now as well, should be fine for the double. They have a nice run of fixtures and they have a better double than Wolves. It is West Ham at home and it is Newcastle at home. So between 8 Nori and Munoz is pretty close. The only reason I'd potentially go 8 Nori over Munoz is the fixtures between now and then are better for Wolves than they are for Crystal Palace. So some of the fixtures coming up might mean that I need to play 8 Nori, whereas Crystal Palace do play Manchester City and Liverpool in two of the next four, which is not ideal. So Looking at some of those potential transfers to buy Mo Salah this week. So as I said, if I'm going to buy Salah this week, it will be for Foden, who has Arsenal. So Foden up to Salah, very annoyingly, if I sell Kieran Trippi in my team, I'm left with 4.4 million in the bank. If I could do Foden to Salah and Trippier to a 4.5 defender in 8 Nori, for example, I would just do it. Things would seem very, very simple for me. But I'm left with 4.4 million. So this leaves me a few possibilities. The first thing is I could go for a more defensive option and just go Richards, who's 3.9 and looks nailed and has the double. The attacking threat's not there, like the Munoz, if he's available or where Nori is, but he has a double coming up and some of the fixtures are looking okay for the foreseeable future. Of course, this bearing in mind if Trippier is going to be out. The other thing I could do is go for one of those 4.5 defenders and force it with another minus four it would be a minus eight this week but it would be upgrading my squad somewhere so the first place I could do would be Kaminsky to probably Dean Henderson Sam Johnson at Crystal Palace who is their main goalkeeper at the moment looks like he's walled out with a, an elbow injury for the rest of the season Henderson is 4.4 million so that would free up enough money to do the other two transfers of course Henderson has a double in 34, which neither of my goalkeepers do. He also has a better fixture this week and next week, as opposed to Ariola and Kaminsky, who both have awful fixtures over the next two games as well. So it both is good for the next couple. It frees up money that I would need, and he has a double in game week 34. I could do something similar, but elsewhere in defence. So Trippier to 8 Nori, and then actually downgrading Doughty to the other one. So probably Munoz or another 4.5 if Munoz was going to be out injured. So 
yeah, someone else in and at 4.5 million, like Mitchell, for example. So there are potential other transfers that I can make to force that extra little bit of money that I'd need. It's so annoying that I am 0.1 short of Foden to Salah and Trippier to Eight Nori. That would be perfect for a minus four this week if I could afford it, but I'm not. So I might have to force it a little bit. If I had to decide now, it would be the goalkeeper transfer, particularly because Munoz is still a doubt. So Kaminsky to Henderson feels like it is a better option for me. Now, a lot of that revolves around Kieran Trippier being unavailable this week. And if he turns out to be available, we should hear that in the Newcastle press conference, although we all know what Eddie Howe's like in some of his press conferences at the moment. Here are what potential transfers would look like for me going into game week 31 if I was going to roll my transfer this week if Trippier is fine and then potentially go and make the transfers next week. Of course, I'd have two free transfers. I'd still be taking a minus four. Gordon would then be the one likely to go for Mo Salah. Trippier would go down to probably Ben White, double up on the Arsenal defence. He's looked good going forward. They also have Luton at home in game week 31, which is a really nice fixture. And then I would sell Ollie Watkins. I don't love selling Watkins, but if I'm keeping him for Wolves, he then has Arsenal Manchester City in two of the next three. After that, he doesn't double in game week 34. And I like Mateta as a differential, right? He's 4.9 million, so such a good enabler for Salah. Doubling in game week 34, and I can just sit him on my bench. He rotates really well with the rest of my squad. So if Trippier is going to be out this week, I might be forced to take hits this week to buy Salah in 30. But if Trippier is available, which I think is probably more likely, then I may take a minus four next week that looks like this. So just to rattle through what my team looks like this week, again, at time recording, we're going to go with Ariola in goal over Kaminsky. It's much of a muchness in terms of those goalkeepers, but I do think that Trippier is going to be available this week. So I do plan on rolling the transfer. Not having Salah is absolutely terrifying for me this week. I think he's the best captaincy option. If you have Son and Salah in your team and you're wondering who to captain, I would just stick the captaincy armband on Mo Salah. I think he's a better option than Son, but because I don't have Salah, Son will be my captain. Zabani at home to Everton and Malagusto at home to Chelsea. He is yellow flagged, but he has been involved in Chelsea training on Wednesday. So he should be absolutely fine for that Burnley at home game in game week 30. Son, as I've mentioned, in midfield at home to Luton. Palmer at home to Burnley. And then I'm going with Foden and Saka. At the moment, I still have Anthony Gordon on my bench. I like Gordon. I think he's a good option, but he's not massively explosive and he plays in the 12:30 kickoff and I don't want to bench Foden or Saka if Walker and, J and Stones are both out for Manchester City I'm not benching Saka Foden at the Etihad I'm also not benching so at the moment it is Gordon on my bench Haaland, Solanke, Watkins make up the front three no real doubt about them I need Solanke and Watkins to perform this week because a lot of people wild carding are ditching these two in the favour of the likes of Darwin or Isaac. One of them might stay, but there are a lot of people selling these two on wildcard, so I could do with them turning up. In terms of captaincy, for me, because I don't have Salah, it's between Son, Palmer, and maybe Haaland, but I'm not going to put it on Haaland based on the other fixtures we've got. Palmer, vice-captain for me this week, and Son with the captaincy armband. Now, I have a little bit of doubt that Richarlison might come in and play up front, and it puts Son wide which is a little bit of a put off for me with the captaincy on Son, but it doesn't put me off enough to change my mind from that. So just to walk you through what it's going to look like, both in terms of Trippier being available and Trippier being out. So to start with, if Trippier is going to be available, I think I will roll my transfer this week. I don't feel like I massively need to force anything. I could do a goalkeeper transfer, but it would basically force a minus eight for me next week. Game week 31, as I said, I'd have two free transfers. Watkins would go, Mateta would come in, Gordon would go, Salah would come in, and I would bench Mateta for Salah. He does have Bournemouth away, but I'm not benching any of my front seven that week. Outside of them, Saka, Palmer, Foden, Son, Salah all look really good with Solanke and Haaland. We would start Gabriel in my defence, probably over Trippier, because Trippier would have to leave my team. But if I end up buying Ben White, it might be Gusto that drops out. So as you can see, I'm short of that. So Trippier would have to go as part of a minus four. At the moment, Ben White is the plan. Eight Nori could also come in because he has Burnley away that week. Then West Ham at home. Then Forest away. Then the double. But at the moment, Ben White is the plan of that final spot. Doubling up on the defence. I could also go for a cheap Liverpool option if we knew Canate 
Gomez, Bradley were nailed, but I don't think we're going to think that's the case. So at the moment, Ben White in will be the transfer in in game week 31. And my team looks pretty nice for that week. Again, in goal, I mean, Ariola and Kaminsky not looking great at the moment, but I won't force a hit for them until slightly closer to the double. So things look okay there. And in game week 32, again, we'd have one free transfer. But to be honest, the team looks pretty well set up. And finally, we have a decent fixture where I could play Kaminsky at home to Bournemouth in goal. Now, the other thing is, if Trippi is not going to be out, if Trippi is not going to be available, I mean, then we'll likely do Foden up to Mo Salah this week. Trippier would leave my team and we'd go for someone like Ryan Ain't Nori and I'd be 0.1 short. So that Kaminsky to Dean Henderson move would leave me the exact money in the bank. So 0.0 million in the bank for that. So I might have to go early if we knew that Trippier was going to be ruled out. I might have to think of other things if we get to the deadline and I'm going to be priced out on that. In game week 31, as opposed to before, I'd be taking a minus four. For me in game week 31, I'd probably roll the transfer because I'd already have Salah in place. I could actually just bench Watkins and bring in Gordon, who's on my bench at home to Everton, because my team looks pretty well set up. And then what that actually means is in game week 32, I'll have Watkins at home to Brentford, which will feel like quite a bit of a differential that week. So there are a couple of paths. If I bring Salah in this week, I may end up keeping Watkins until almost game week 34, game week 33, and then selling him when he plays Arsenal and then before the double. So a couple of things, depending on the potential injury news to Kieran Trippier over the next couple of days, it might force me into a minus eight. It might force me to roll my transfer, which way that does fall. Any questions you have about your team, drop it all in the comment section down below. What do you think about my team this week? Do you think it's a good plan? Do you think the fear of Salah is going to get to me? Leave me your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching. It is nice to have FPL back. We are officially in double game week season. It is the run-in of FPL. 1,000 likes is the aim. Subscribe if you are new around here. And I'll be back again very soon.